Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Steve-O uh, with 12 Bravo Construction Mechanical. There's a post going around. <laughs> Basically, uh, what it is, is people are saying that they put an, uh, a canopy over their air conditioning unit outside and it's helping perform better. It's keeping the house cooler and stuff like that. Um, and it does work. So I'm not going to tell you that it doesn't to try to sell you some um but it does work and but there are things that you need to be cautious about and i'm going to go through those things i'm going to kind of tell you um how it works and all that stuff right so so basically we all know you turn the air conditioner on it cools the house and then if it's hot you call somebody like me right uh, but basically what happens is you have the condenser right there's a line that it's a little line goes up to the evaporator and it's a high pressure and then there's an orifice that it goes through the evaporator and then it expands into a gas and that is what cooks off and pulls the heat out of the house right and so how this happens is it cools the coil down and condenses the water in the air that's how you get condensate waste um, and then once it runs through the evaporator it goes down to the condenser as a superheated vapor <coughs> and now it has to turn that superheated vapor back into a um, a liquid so basically the heat is rejected outside of the house and whenever it's 102 105 degrees outside it has a hard time doing that because the units are designed usually between 72 and 75 degrees inside and about 50 percent relative humidity and then you got a 95 degree outside ambient temp, right? That is its optimum range that is gonna perform the, at its best, right? So they're done in a lab. It's always different than the lab than it is here, right? So obviously they didn't do it where it's 95 degrees outside with like 70% humidity where you walk out to your car and it looks like you jumped out of a pool. So what happens is um, when it gets that hot, and especially when it's in direct sunlight because it heats up the whole unit it makes everything hot and when something's hot and it's trying to reject heat it makes it harder right so one of the things you are going to see uh if you did do this is you would see the head pressure go down and what i mean by that is the liquid line that goes up to the evaporator that's our head pressure so you'll see that go down and when you see that go down that means that your unit is running more efficiently um so Basically, you just got to be careful when you do this. It is a good idea. I don't know why I didn't think about it, but whoever came up with it is a very good idea. And supposedly in the post, it was an old man. Um, he's been around the world or two. And so um, I did learn something today. Um, but I mean, I, I, I kind of could have figured it out. But, you know, so here's the deal. Um, you just got to be mindful. Like I said, these things are designed in a lab. So they know how much clearance that condenser needs in order to breathe correctly, right? So like with Rude, as you can see here, they require 60 inches of clearance from the top of the condenser to whatever roof pit or whatever it is, the canopy, you know, a piece of wood, whatever. So if you don't have that, what happens is that air comes down, recirculates back into the condenser and it's and all you're doing is taking hot air, putting it back down into the condenser. So you're going to get your best performance um, if you get the clearance that it. And you can do that by going online and looking up the manuals, and it should tell you um, how much clearance that thing needs. It'll tell you on the sides, the back, the front, the top. Um, that's what you need to know. So if it says 60 inches, I would put mine about 60 inches, maybe even a little higher, just, you know, because you're trying to shade the unit, not really recirculate that air. Uh, you don't want to affect the performance. So I would probably go about 60 to 70 inches. Um, so that that's what you need to worry about. And, and if you do um, bring it lower, what, what can happen is, I, I would assume, just because as an AC guy, seeing things fail and stuff like that. So, like, usually when you have a restriction in the airflow, it causes the fan motor to work harder, which could cause that to fail. So, it causes the motor to heat up, um, the, cause the capacitor to fail faster. So, you just want to be cognitive of that, right? 
So whenever you're recirculating air and it's putting resistance on there, you just want to make sure that you got the right height um, or else you could cause issues. It may not happen right away, but over time you are causing premature failure. Um, so I would say it's a good idea. Um, I would do it, um, you know, and, and I mean, that's pretty much all I got, you know, cause I mean, it is a good idea. Um, I've also seen things online where you can buy a, it's kind of like a mister for your condenser. And I've looked at those. Those are pretty cool. Um, however, our water is so hard here. I don't know if I would run that. So they make a little thing. You put it on the top of the condenser and when the thing kicks on, it puts the flapper up and then it starts misting your, your condenser with water that will also reduce. And that would probably be the most efficient, um, um, way to, you know, cool your, your home down. However, our water is so hard here and we got salt in the air and all kinds of stuff because we're close to the coast. Um, to me, if you did it without a filtration system, uh, because we have scale, lime, all kinds of stuff in the water and that condenser is so hot, um, the air temperature leaving that could be anywhere between, I mean, it could be 105, 130 degrees. It just really depends on the unit itself. Um, but those coils get so hot that that water evaporates quickly and it doesn't have time for that scale and everything to run down off the condenser. So what happens is it dries out on the condenser fan coils and that could cause it to not work well and stuff like that. So that's why I never really made a video about it. Um, if I was going to use something like that, if you do, I don't recommend those. However, I would make sure I put a water filtration system on it. So that way you're getting clean water going through. Um, I've had ideas that I wanted to use, um, but according to EPA and all that stuff, we can't do that. So we won't get into that kind of stuff, but I'm going to post these pictures so that way you can see them. Um, and bravo to whoever created this post. Um, it is good advice. However, you just, like they said in the post, you need to do your own homework. And I'm hoping this kind of answers your questions. If you do have questions or you have questions about AC stuff, feel free to write in. Um, I might make a video out of it, or I may just respond to you and let you know kind of what the deal is. So I'm Steve-O with 12 Bravo Construction and Mechanical. Feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. Like us on Facebook. Um, you can even hit me up on, on Facebook under my personal account. It's Steve Marino or Steven Marino. Um, love to have you love to answer questions. So, um, yeah, y'all have a good night. I just got home. It's eight 30 and, uh, it's been one crazy day. It was hot. So you stay cool and, uh, we'll see you around.